All right, I'm back. I gotta share this dream, okay? The night that I left camp, which I try to respectfully bow out. And, uh, you know, these brothers lied on me, everything else. So let me get into this dream I had, all right? So I'm gonna stand up one day, all right? Can you see me real good? Well, I'll stand up when I need to be demonstrative. But, uh, so here's my dream, all right? It was Yacoba, Tahaya, and I. And we got invited up to uh, this guy's condo. It was an apartment. And it was like the second floor, but the first floor was real high. Like, like it was a big garage or something underneath. So the, we went up to this condo. It was like a real fly living room, kind of dark. And it had a bunch of fish tanks around it. And in the far corner was like a black countertop with a little sink in the back. And then there was a sofa. Yacoba went and sat down at the uh, countertop with the sink. And me and Tahaya sitting on the sofa shoulder to shoulder. And this Gordon Ramsay guy comes out and he gives us all a book and tells us to open up to, to this book of the book. And it sounded like Tobias or Tumalias or Ptolemaeus or something like that. So we all had the book and we opened to what he wanted to read it to. And, and I'm like looking like my eyes were so dry in the dream. Like I could not focus on the words, man. And I'm trying to trying to focus. And he's re, he's the uh, the Gordon Ramsay looking guy is. Uh, he's speaking, but I understand what he's saying. And like to to my left, he's like trying to help me. And he's like he's like he's like trying to help me follow along but I'm like I just can't my eyes are so dry like I could not focus on, on, on any of it so whatever the Gordon Ramsay guy was proposing to Haya and Yukova said yes and they they went out they they went out their way and they were out to dream so then I go out back of this condo and it's like a cookout setting nobody's cooking nobody's eating though and my family is there my wife and my children are there so I go down to them in the yard and there's like a nature trail and uh, it leads into like the wilderness. So we go on a hike in the wilderness, man. And I start feeling good. My juices start flowing again and my, my eyes are wet again. So I'm like, hey, you know, when we get back, I'm going to go up there and see what this was all about, man. See, see what's good. So we get back into the yard and my wife kind of dips out the dream and... I'm with my two children. We walk up to the shed. And the shed is just like normal backyard shed, but it's got like a little extra abutment up top with two windows on the side. And me and my kids are looking at this thing like, yo, this is so cool. So we go inside and it's like almost like a carousel ride, right? And and the shed can open up in all these different ways like a Rubik's cube. So my kids, I'm like, yeah, my children are occupied with this. Let me go up here and see what's up with the Gordon Ramsay guy. So so like I'm going up, I climb up this like scaffolding and equipment that's that's linked up on the house, right? And I'm leaning up on a four by four that's hooked to this deck area outside the condo. So there's like a servant kind of guy standing there. So I said, hey, I can see now. Can, can you grab the Gordon Ramsay guy? So I can see what this is all about. And he's like, yeah, and he goes and gets him. The Gordon Ramsay guy comes out. He's got a red, white, and blue string necklace, a red, white, and blue string uh, bracelets, right? And I'm like, all right, look, I can see what's going on. And he, he's looking at me like, look, I'm, I'm throwing this stuff out. I'm bringing it back. And I'm, I'm throwing this stuff out. I'm bringing it back. I have time for nothing. And I'm like, and then what he's doing, his eyes are changing. And I'm, I say to him, I'm like, your eyes. And then he takes a little step back and he purposely makes his eyes change to the point where it turns into two like reptile eyes, like vertical vesica Pisces. And then they change back. And then he's like, and then I'm like, all right, well, yeah, yeah, I, I still want to be involved. Like I saw the wickedness and I was like, yeah, I still want to do it. He's like, go holler at the woman in the yard sitting in a, uh, like a plastic Walmart lawn chair and she's wearing khakis and a, a black nylon polo. So I go down there and I, I, I go talk to her and I'm like, hey, the Gordon Ramsay guy said, uh, oh, and now at this point, the Gordon Ramsay guy, he was wearing like a, a blue 
a navy blue tank top and navy blue shorts and he was like ripped not like steroid ripped but like creatine ripped so he sent me down to the yard i go to the woman down there and i'm like hey the gordon ramsay guy sent me down here you know what's good and she's like here's the mission i'm like yeah what's the mission she's like we have to get the aa curriculum into the school system and i'm in my mind like it's like a, it's like a, it seems like a good thing for kids to know, you know, better then than later by court order. So I'm like, all right, yes. And, she, and I'm like, her eyes started to change. And I was like, your eyes. And she made them change, but not as extreme as, as, as the Gordon Ramsay guy. And then they changed back. And then she points at the servant guy, look at him. And he made his eyes change, but it was just slight. So it's like three levels of demonic spirits occupying these three people and what a, what a, a coincidence that the camp has three heads you know i thought you how shy was our head man talking about i'm bucking up against the order man because y'all y'all being running around being wicked man you treating me this kind of way man y'all tripping man so again you know we're dealing with a hierarchy of devils so so I said yes to the plan so now I'm on board I'm part of the part of it sun starts going down I look out in the yard my two children are like laying down sleeping on a lawn chair that you know folds down everything but my son ain't brush his teeth yet so I go over to the uh, I grab him, say, come, come on, son, let's go brush your teeth. He's got just like the end of a mechanical toothbrush. So we go over to the sink that Yacoba was sitting at er earlier in the dream and uh, put a little toothpaste on there, and I'm trying to get water out of the sink. There's no water at the sink where Yacoba was. So now I look down to my left. There's a, a like a whirlpool bathtub down the hallway. So I'm like, come on, son, let's go get you some water down here. So it gets a little water on it. And then while we're there, I'm looking down another hallway. The Gordon Ramsay guy comes out. And he's wearing like a black bathrobe and some black boxer shorts. And, and I'm also in like a black tank top and some black boxer shorts at this time. Like, we getting ready to like sleep there. So he's coming down the hallway. And he's being like sarcastically mean to me, right? And I took like two steps back. He comes around the, the, the bathtub and he pushes my son. And I caught my son, right? My son was really upset. And he was like, is he crying? And then I woke up. So look at that. Look, look, let's take a look at that dream, okay? The Lord showed me. And look, I was having trouble sleeping that night, man, because I was upset about this whole situation. I had, like, fallen asleep two times and woke up before. And now this is, this is the third time I fell asleep. All right? So let's backtrack. Let's backtrack real quick. Okay, you know, nobody wants to see their son get pushed, number one, all right? But keep on backtracking, no water where your call was, okay? Let's keep on backtracking. Um, the shed and, and the Rubik's Cube thing, like, I really don't know what that was, other than puzzling, no pun intended. And then... Keep backtracking, you know. I'm out in the wilderness with my family, and that's when I can see again. Okay? The Lord had blinded me. Because I would never say yes to no, no wickedness, man. Unless I was being deceived or the Lord blinded me so he could drop me in a fire and then pull me out. Okay? Um, hold on. I had a precept on that. I, I hope I brought it out. I hope I brought it out. Um, anyway... Uh, so that's that dream. The Lord showed me three levels of a demonic hierarchy. Okay, that I was saying yes to. So, the next night, I have another dream. Okay, I'm in a neighborhood of a dude I went to school with back in the day. It's like a rich neighborhood out in the hills of damn Cockeysville or something. And, uh, I, I, I'm walking down, I see his house, and then he had some neighbors that was brothers down there too. We hung out and played basketball and everything. So we go down there, and it's like me, my family, 
and Nabakaala is with me. So we go down here and the, the neighbor, their neighbor's house is like boarded up plus with plywood, plus there's like an old blue sedan, like an 80s sedan with the license plate with a piece of plywood over it. And I was like, what's that, you know? So we turn around, we're walking back up the hill. There's three jets that fly by and two of them are facing this way and one's faced this way and they're like locked together. And the first set of them was navy blue and yellow. So they, or no, the first set of them was white and yellow. So they fly by, right? And then we're like, oh, wow, look, you know? And then uh, two jets fly by, there's navy blue and yellow, and they go overhead. So we're like, huh, that was weird. That's only two of them. But then there's, here comes the other blue and yellow jet, and it like softly crash lands in this other driveway. So like we run over, we think somebody's gonna get out, like pop the hatch, Put a, put a knee up, pop the hatch, put a knee up, take a helmet off, and be like, ha, ah, I'm a pilot, right? Nah. The guy was like seemingly like had some kind of head injury. And the dude kind of looked like Martin Lawrence from like the, the 90s. But it was was not Martin Lawrence. But just to give you an idea what this what his brother looked like. So we go knock on the door of the driveway that the that the plane landed in and they take us all in you know it's a family in there and uh we're sitting at a coffee table at one point and 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 the the brother the pilot from the plane he's kind of just like disheveled like he doesn't really know what's going on so it's like there's a certain point where like we're done chopping it up in the in the dining room so we move into uh a living room that was like had two steps leading up to it and the tv's on the family that, that whose house it was had children they was watching tv so like everybody started watching tv and then i laid out a mat for the brother that was like injured the pilot nabaka all over there chilling watching tv my family just chilling everybody's just chilling watching the tv and i'm like trying to ask this brother like you know what do you know your name like, what, what's going on? You need to call somebody. So he's like calling somebody and he's drawing a map, but he can't do it. He's like, he's like, he can't do it. So he's like, can you tell them where I'm at and draw them a map? So I'm like, yeah, I'll draw the map for you. So I'm drawing the map. And then while, while we're like waiting on his people to come, it's like, I'm like helping the family like cut up like vegetables or something like that in the kitchen. So I'm like helping his family, I'm helping his brother. Everybody's chilling, just watching TV. Then, you know, we all depart and we're walking up a hill. We're walking up a hill in the wilderness. And then that was, that was the end of that journey. I'm still trying to figure out what that one means you know, but, you know, if anybody got any ideas, you know, throw it in the comments. But, uh, you know, the, the the first dream, man, the Most High, the Most High had used me. I give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, and Mashiach, Malach to get in here and not to condemn these brothers, but to warn them. The Lord is long suffering, the Lord is merciful. Okay. It's unfortunate things had to happen like this, but this is the way the most high had to happen. You know, he told me, he said, go hard on him, go hard on him, go hard on him. But you know, I can only go so hard what I'm working with. Okay, shalom on to the brother Tizawa for his testimony. Wherever you at, man, hey. I hope you're doing alright, bro. Uh, to the rest of the bros in the, in the camp, you know, consider consider what what I've laid out in front of you, man. Things ought to be clear upon the table. All right. Call Halal Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Ba Hashem Akapadash Shalom.